guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Christian here. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today I thought we could talk about a bunch of different makeup that I purchased knowing that I was not going to use it. I mean, at the time when I bought it, like in my, like, in my head, I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is absolutely awesome. And I can't wait to test it. I have to have this in my collection and it's gonna be great. But like deep down in my makeup subconscious, when I was buying this, when I was checking out, I knew that I was never going to use these products. Today, this is actually the second time I've attempted to film this video. I actually attempted to film it months and months and months ago, but the footage just wasn't great. So we're gonna go ahead and try it again. And a lot of these products were purchased in 2017. It was meant to be a roundup of beauty of 2017 and kind of just talking about products that I purchased in 2017. Even though we're halfway through 2018, I feel like this can still apply. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a list of reasons why I buy makeup that like deep down inside, like deep down if I really soul search, I know that I'm not actually going to use. So I'm gonna give you reasons why and then I'm also gonna demonstrate and show products that kind of go with those different categories. Now some of these products will cross different categories, like they can work in several different ways, um, but I'm gonna try to cater them to one specific category. And of course there's probably a ton of different reasons that I buy makeup that I'm not gonna be mentioning today, but these are the ones that just came in, like came to my mind originally when I decided to first do this video. So if you're interested in all the ways that I waste my money and all the products that I waste my money on and all the reasons why I do so, then you're in the right place and you're gonna wanna for sure go ahead and keep on watching. Okay, so one of the main reasons that I will buy a makeup product without fully thinking it through or taking a moment to decide that if it's something that I actually wanna like use and need, if there's actually a need for it in my collection, is if I genuinely support the brand. If through and through all the products that I try from a brand tend to be really good, really staple products, I will tend to just go ahead and when I see that brand launching a particular item, I would just go ahead and pick it up without really giving it much thought. And then hindsight, I'll kind of think to myself, I knew that I was never gonna use that. Why did I buy that? So brand loyalty has a lot to do with why sometimes I will purchase makeup that in the back of my mind, I know that I'm not going to use. And one of those products that fits this category is by the brand Natasha Denona. I love Natasha Denona most. I would say 90% of the things that I have tried from Natasha Denona have blown me away. One of my favorite highlighters comes from her. I love her eyeshadow palettes. Her blushes are amazing. I just heard, just through and through everything that I have tried, it's always impressive. The price point is ridiculously high. And sometimes I'm kind of like, well, you know, I feel like, it doesn't need to be that expensive, but it's to the point where I'm kind of like, I've never let down. Do I wish that her prices were more affordable? Absolutely, but do I think that, am I ever upset that I spent the money on her products? So far, no, not really, it's never happened. But this is one of those products that I saw was being released by the brand Natasha Denona, and I just wanted to purchase it so bad because I just think that her products are amazing. But deep down inside, like if I really self-reflect, I did not need to purchase this. No matter how good her products are, no matter how much I support the brand, no matter how much I love her eyeshadow formulation, I had zero need for this. This guy retailed for $89. It is the Natasha Denona Sculpt and Glow Highlighter Palette. And, well, highlighter and contour palette. And I picked it up because A, it was Natasha Denona. I love the sneak peek. I love everything about the brand. It's just, it's classic. It is just, like it's just aesthetically pleasing and I was kind of like yes I have to get that I love her highlighter so I can only imagine that her sculpting products are going to be absolutely amazing and y'all I don't do not almost never contour so why did I feel the need to buy an entire contour palette for $89 I don't know I'm not sure, but I just, for some reason, had to have it. Um, I mean, I've played with this a couple times. You can definitely see that I have used it. I've probably used it all of five times since I've purchased it, and I purchased it when it first came out. This highlight shade is too dark for me, so I can't use it out of the gate. This is the highlighter that I'm always talking about and raving about, which is my fa favorite everyday highlighter. So it's cool that this comes in here because I definitely would use it at some point, but I already own it in a full size. So, I mean, I've hit pan on the full size, so I don't even know that I would reach for this big old thing just to use this highlighter, even though this highlighter is one of my favorites. It comes with three creams, 
when I do contour, the five times a year that I probably do contour, I don't use creams. I use powders. So the fact that there's creams in here, yay, that's cool. You get more bang for your buck because you get creams and powders and no other contour kit does creams and powders. Well, if I don't use creams, what, why does, why do I care? So, I mean, all in all, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I have played with this. I have used it a couple times when it first came out. I have not reached for it since, but I mean, they are blendable. They are pigmented. They do work. One thing that I do like about Natasha Denona is, especially when she releases face palettes, on this particular face palette, she released like a light medium and then like a more medium deep. And then when she released her new blush and highlighter palette, she also released two of those as well. So I do like the fact that she does that because a lot of brands don't. They throw out one face palette and they expect it to be one size fits all and that's not the case. So again, one reason why I will buy a makeup product with like thoroughly thinking it through is because I genuinely support the brand. When Natasha Denona launches something, I buy it instantly. Um, with no thought, with no real time to sit back and say, okay, do I really need that? Is that something that I would benefit from? Because our products just through and through are good products and I'm never disappointed by the products. Even this, I'm not disappointed by. It's just something that I don't personally need. So another reason how I found myself wasting a lot of money and spending a lot of money last year on things that I knew that I wasn't going to use, one other reason was because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. Now that's one of those things that I feel like a lot of people have struggled with in the past, you know, especially when the market now is so oversaturated with warm tone neutral eyes or warm tone palettes and then, you know, there was the neutral palettes and then now we're seeing the neutral palette with the pop of blue or the neutral palette with the pop of yellow. It's so repetitive and it just becomes the same thing over and over again. And then you'll see that one palette that's something different and you're kind of like, well maybe if I had that in my collection, I won't do the same coppery bronze eye all the time when deep down inside you know you are never going to apply a yellow on your lid or a blue in your crease like you're just not that girl and i am not that girl but when i purchased this palette i was kind of like i'm gonna be that girl so i will purchase things from time to time and this is not the first time that i've actually done this purchase something to get out of my comfort zone but this is the palette that came to mind because it's probably the more recent one that i purchased to get out of my comfort zone this is the urban decay full spectrum palette of course this was limited edition it is no longer available but it is basically a colorful palette um that comes it's like it's basically different tones of similar colors. So like your greens, your blues, your purples. And I kind of picked up this palette because I thought to myself, okay, it's a one-stop shop for all the colors that I could ever need. If I purchase this, I will never have to purchase another colorful palette. I can play with this palette. I can, you know, practice, you know, put in this blue in my crease or putting, you know, other than just the pop of color underneath the lower lash line, which is when we want to play with color, which is what most of us neutral girls do. We'll say, okay, let's put that purple on my lash line. Now I do play with purples a lot. I do put purples on my eye a lot because it makes my light brown hazily eyes pop when I wear purple. And you know, I'm wearing, you know, pinky tones today. I just don't really, you know, I play with color a little bit, but I do it in a very safe, safe way. I was watching a video and again, this was a long time ago. I don't remember who talked about it. I think it was makeup by Tiffany D. She mentioned this palette um, when it was a new palette and she was, there was she purchased it for the same reason or she mentioned it for the same reason the one-stop shop palette um it's the only palette that you'll ever need for color again and i kind of drank the kool-aid and i picked it up i don't think i have ever used this outside of a swatch maybe i've put a couple colors on my eyes here and there but i genuinely let me look at this let me open this up yeah i don't think this has ever been used except for swatching because some of these colors don't even look like they've been touched and I almost fell into the same hype again when Sephora released their pro palettes. That colorful palette, I came so close to buying it, so close, but that one was $69. I don't use this, so I'm so glad that I was smart enough to say, you've already been down this road, you're not gonna use the colorful palette, you better not spend $69 on another colorful palette that you know you're not gonna use. So I learned my lesson and I didn't buy that palette even though I really, really, really wanted to. So another reason why I I, I'm not gonna use is because I want to get out of my comfort zone. So was this a waste of money? Absolutely. Am I gonna pull it out of my drawer and pretend like I'm gonna use it? Yes. Am I actually gonna use it? Probably not. So there's that guy. 
Now this is a tough one. Last year I felt like there was a lot of different products that were coming out that kind of pulled on my heartstrings a little bit and I only gave into the hype once. Another reason why I will find myself buying something that I know that I'm not gonna use or that I know that I don't need is because of nostalgia. And the first thing that came to mind was this guy. Uh, Lorac released a Beauty and the Beast collection last year and I want to say that they released it right around the time that Beauty and the Beast was being um, put on DVD and Blu-ray. And I almost fell into the hype a couple of other times. The Mean Girl collection came out last year and I had to sit myself down and really talk to myself and say, you don't need that. They had My Little Pony collections last year. Just a bunch of different things that had me just all in my feelings and remembering what it was like to be nine and wanting to buy makeup that I had absolutely zero need for. So don't get me wrong, this packaging was absolutely beautiful. It's so nice. It's so Beauty and the Beast with the rose and I like it. I feel like it's an aesthetically pleasing package and the second I saw it, I knew that I, sorry, the it's too reflective. The second I saw it, I knew that I had to pick it up. Um, I loved the live anim the live animated version of Beauty and the Beast. I thought it was so good and I just had to have this. I also really liked the way that Lorac released this particular palette. They just kind of said, here it is, here you go. There wasn't a lot of hype. There wasn't a lot of build up behind it. It was just kind of like, you know, I think Tati did a review on it and like the next day or a couple days later, it was out for the world. And I kind of liked that. They didn't build it up. They didn't overhype it. We all saw this and we were like, oh. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what happened. Now, one thing I will say, I feel like this palette was ex executed nicely. Like, I do think that the color story is, it's well put together. Um, when you actually look at the different colors in the palette, um, it's not overly, I mean, you do have your <laughs> pop of blue that I already mentioned. I mean, for the most part, it is a very neutral palette. There are some cool tone shades in here as well. You do see one or two warm sh uh, warm tone shades in this palette as well. It was a well executed palette. It sold out quite a lot. Like when it actually launched, it did sell out, if I remember correctly, pretty quickly. But I just had to have it. I had the intentions of, when I purchased that, that was not really one that I ever had the intentions of using. It was just one of those, I wanna buy it, I wanna put it on display. I don't know where I thought I was gonna display it in my little one bedroom apartment with that's overrun with makeup. I mean, I really, I didn't need it, y'all. I also picked up the lipsticks and I also picked up the face palette. And Lorac actually makes some really nice highlighters and blushes. You don't really hear enough about them. I do think that their highlighters deserve a little bit more hype than what they get. And so do their blushes. They're really smooth, they're really blendable, they really have nice pigmentation. I've heard Tati talk about the highlighters quite a bit. I've mentioned them multiple times on my channel. And all in all, they're really good. This is a face palette that actually I feel like I would probably get a ton of use out of. I just never grab for it. I never ever reach for it. The lipsticks, I never reach for. It was just one of those impulse. I knew that I wasn't gonna use it, which is, I mean, I know it's the premise of this entire video. Like I knew deep down that I didn't need it and I purchased it anyway. And that's the thing with 2018, like I still have purchased a ton of makeup in 2018, but one thing that I will say is I don't, I don't have that instant, what is it, knee jerk reaction to where I pull the trigger on a makeup item right away, um, which in 2016, 2017, 2015, I had, I had a really hard time with that. Like I would look at something that I'm gonna be like, ooh, it's new, I have to buy it and I have to try it because maybe I'll review it on my channel. And then I had to kind of take a step back and think, well, if I don't actually need it, if it's not something I'm actually interested in, then why am I buying it? Now, obviously, if I was a bigger YouTuber, if I got more views, if people came to my channel more often to see what I think about products, I probably would more often this year continue on that trend of buying things just so I can talk about them for you guys. But since I'm not a big YouTuber and I don't tend to get a lot of views, I'm not going to buy something like this year. I've been really, really good about buying stuff that only interests me and not something just for YouTube sake and viewership sh sake, if that makes sense. But anyways, I kind of got off topic for a second. Another reason why I will buy a product is because of just plain old genuine, that good old fashioned hype. So there was no brand more hyped in 2017 than Fenty Beauty. I feel like Fenty Beauty is still hyped even right now, but I don't think that they are as hyped as they were last year whenever she released her complexion products. I think that even with some of her newer releases, people are just kind of like, eh. So, but the Fenty Galaxy palette, it was the first palette that uh, Fenty Beauty had released in their collection. Since then, they've since come out with the Moroccan palette, Moroccan Spice palette, which I've heard very, very mixed things about as well. 
everybody most of the reviews that I've seen have been kind of like oh well you know we expected a little something more something a little bit more spicy from Fenty and a lot of people didn't really care for this palette either I think for what it was it was a decent palette and I'm saying that as if I ever used it because I've never used it I think it was a great companion palette but then I realized that these aren't really shades or these aren't really like I'm not really into like more topper shades and a lot of times when I'm doing my makeup I just want to go into one palette and be done I don't want to pull from different palettes and this was a companion palette so the packaging is really really nice the packaging I mean the packaging will get you in and of itself I've never outside of swatching this have ever ever put these on my eyeballs Ever. I purchased this solely for the Fenty Beauty hype. I purchased it solely because it was the first eyeshadow palette. You know, a lot of the other products I had really been into. I think for what this palette is, it's a nice palette, but I don't think that it's anything to write home about, which is why at the moment I've decided not to purchase the second or her Moroccan Spice palette. I had it in my hand because I was in Sephora with my mom yesterday and I had it in my hand and I almost purchased it but I put it back. They did not have a display, so I could not swatch the colors or anything like that. And I had to tell myself, how bad do you need that? You've purchased so many eyeshadow palettes recently. You've never touched the last one. Nobody overall, they're saying that the colors of the new palette, oh, you know, they blend well, they work pretty well, but nobody overall is giving it a knock out of the park. Best eyeshadow palette, so good, you absolutely need it. Nobody's saying that about this new palette and not many people said it about this palette either because I'm addicted to makeup and I'm addicted to new things and I felt like I had to have it. If I could go back in time, I would not have purchased this. So the next two things can kind of fall into both categories, um, but I'm kind of kind of separated out into separate categories. So Another reason why I will tend to purchase items is because of the packaging. Let's be honest, packaging, you know, if you're somebody who likes beautiful things, something that's aesthetically pleasing, a lot of times you'll be more likely to buy pack something because of the packaging is nice and the uh, the product on the inside being subpar whereas somebody might be a little less likely to buy something with ugly packaging with a great product on the inside because if the packaging sucks you're probably just going to kind of walk right over it unless you're already familiar with those brands or at least that's kind of my experience you know especially like for example uh Vizart or Viseart those boring AF palettes they're actually really good but when you look at them if you're not familiar with that brand you're gonna look at them and be like oh that's boring and it's eighty dollars as opposed to walking over to an Urban Decay display that has a really cute packaging or Too Faced that has really cute packaging and think oh that's fifty dollars and it's also really cute I'll buy that instead and the first thing that came to mind was this little guy this infamous rose highlighter this I don't remember how expensive this was because it's been a while since I've purchased it but I feel like it was expensive I've never used it now let me tell you let me tell you for a moment I had zero desire to pick this up none I saw it and I was like you know it is so pretty you know, I wouldn't mind having that, but oh, it's too expensive. You know what? I'm okay. But you know, it's really, really pretty. Like in the time that I was going back and forth on, you know, if the packaging was worth it, if the cute little rose was actually worth it, it sold out. And then I was kind of like, you know what? I didn't need that anyway. I did not want that anyway. I had talked myself out of it. I told myself that the packaging was not worth it. And I was proud. Okay. And then it came back in stock. Trend Mood posted that it was available at Ulta. In, in very limited quantities. I went to Ulta's website so fast, realized in that moment that I could not live without this beautiful rose shaped highlighter and I bought it instantly, like instantly. I talked myself out of it and then I just looked at it and I was like, it is so beautiful, I have to buy it. So I bought this overpriced highlighter that I've never, not one time put on my cheekbones not once for a really long time it sat on display behind me nobody comes to my room nobody's in my apartment y'all can't see it because my chair is blocking it so who am i displaying this probably 60 dollars highlighter for can someone explain it to me because i can't i don't know i have no idea why i bought this other than the fact when you open it up you're like ooh, pretty i'm so i'm i'm just disappointed in myself i'm gonna just put that down and move on that's probably one of the ones that like irks me the most because I had talked myself out of it and then that exclusive limited edition gotta get it now hype which is another reason why we all buy stuff because we feel like if 
we don't want to have you know full on FOMO for the rest of our lives that we buy stuff that we know we don't need and then the brands keep it in stock for the next eight years anyway that fear of missing out man it'll get you it will get you and that is what leads me to this guy so this is the urban decay basquiat collection and this came out sometime last year and first of all i just want to talk about how ridiculous the launch of this actual situation was it was awful urban decay executed this just not in a good way so i originally wanted to pick up the entire vault that had released on urban decay's website for 165 dollars but they ended up launching it early it sold out in exactly two seconds and then you couldn't find it anywhere and that made me want it more. And then also the packaging was unique. It was different. It was fun. It was edgy. It was, you know, um, it was essentially art. It had, you have the little hanger on the back to where if you were going to hang a freaking eyeshadow palette on your wall, which I doubt you would, you could have done so. And the fact that it was so exclusive, the fact that I could not get my hands on that vault, I had to have this. It's one of those palettes that, again, the pop of blue that we're used to seeing. I mean, I have these shades a million times over in my collection. When you have a collection as large as I do, that's just going to become the case. So I'm not complaining about the fact that it's just a neutral palette or a warm tone neutrally palette with a pop of color. That's not the case at all. Because um, I, I genuinely thought, okay, I will actually use this. Um, I don't know why I genuinely thought that I would actually going to use this because I have palettes that I like more that have a similar color story. But I just, I feel like Urban Decay knew what they were doing and I hate when brands do that. You know, they put so much hype around a product, so much you have to have it, they shove it down your face and then it's so exclusively limited that you just fear that it's just something that if you don't have, you're just kind of like, well, my makeup collection will never be complete. If you're a YouTuber or a beauty blogger, it's kind of like, well, I'm gonna need this for reference someday and you just feel like you have to have it. So once that vault sold out online, I was kind of like, you know what, no, I'm not gonna buy it. You know, I wanted the vault, I thought it was a good deal, I thought it was a good price, especially when you think about buying everything individually. And then they were gonna release the vault on Ulta, so I was kind of like, you know, <laughs> I got it, you know, I'm gonna get my exclusive vault. And then Ulta never launched it. They, it never came out, or if it did come out, I don't know what happened, because I was on the website, I had it favored, and everything I was ready and it just never came out and I was on trend moods page and people were talking about I was waiting for it what happened and you know trend mood said something and then it just never came out so then I felt obligated I know obligated really that's just that's the craziness of a makeup like a makeup hoarder slash junkie slash you know youtuber I felt obligated to have to purchase something and again you know look at the packaging you know, it's not, it's not some pretty rosy colored, you know, packaging. There's nothing else like this on the market. I have to get something from this collection just because it's unique. So, and also because it was so limited and exclusive. So I went and they had two palettes and I decided to go ahead and buy this one because I thought that I would actually use this one more than the other one. The other one was a little bit more colorful and I learned my lesson. I'm not going to use colorful stuff. I'm not going to get out of my comfort zone. So I went for this. I think I've used this twice and I don't even think I actually maybe even used it I might have just put it on my I might have just swatched it maybe because let me look this one looks like it's been used but the rest of them don't really look like it they've been used so I probably just swatched these a couple times and never actually used them So those are some of the products that I kind of wanted to talk about as far as reasons why I purchased makeup that I know that I'm not going to use. Of course, we all fall victim to things going on sale. And a lot of times, and I've just, I'll admit it, I just did that. I just filmed an Ulta haul and I purchased a couple things because they went on sale. And there was more reasons to it, but the main reason is because it went on sale because I wouldn't have purchased them full price. Buying things because they go on sale is a huge one. If you didn't want it at full price, you are not gonna want it at the discount. So buying a $50 palette and getting it for $18, even though it's a good deal, it's really a good deal though if you're not actually gonna use it. You know, influencers building a product up so much to where you feel like, you have to buy that and the case is you really don't you know what i mean you know your favorite youtubers um releasing their own brands now you know this is not one that i had in my video last year because not that many youtubers had brands but you know now kristen dominique has her own brand um uh, manny and ua have their own brand you know jeffree star had his brand before youtube but you know he's has a huge brand 
you know, Tati releasing her, you know, her little pills, um, you know, Jaclyn Hill collaborations and just, you know, our YouTubers and YouTuber brands and anything that YouTubers put their names on, you know, which also rolls into the hype, which also rolls into the limited edition exclusiveness. It's like this never ending cycle of feeling the need to spend money on makeup that A, you don't need, B, you're not ever going to use and C, you probably have in your collection a bazillion times. So it's really important you know, if you're a makeup collector, do you, because when you're a makeup collector, you just have that need to buy something because you want to collect it because it's limited edition and there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's within your budget, as long as your bills are getting paid, girl. I just feel like it was really important to me for this year to take a step back and really think about things before I purchase them. Like the Dominique Lemonade palette, I wanted to buy that so bad because I was in love with the Latte palette. And then I saw the color story and I was kind of like, you know what? I don't love it, I don't have to buy it, you know? Just because I liked the first one. Over time, things that I genuinely wanted so bad, when I took a step back and didn't buy it, that impulse the second it launched, a month later, I didn't care. You know what I mean? Because I gave myself time to think it through. And I think that's the most important thing that you can do when you're deciding on whether or not to buy new makeup. Don't buy it the second it launches. Give yourself a minute to think about it. And if you give yourself a minute to think about it, you might not, you might not buy it. And then if you think about it and you still want it after a week, two weeks, three weeks, girl, go for it. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know if you've been personally victimized by any of these makeup buying schemes slash ploy slash I have absolutely no strength and I have to do it like reasons of why we buy makeup. Let me know in the comments below some of the reasons that you buy makeup that I did not mention. Really hope that you did enjoy this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below. And yeah, you guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.